Domestic Homicide Reviews, or DHRs, were established in 2011 under the Domestic Violence Crime and Victims Act 2004. Under the Act, local areas are expected to undertake a multi-agency review to consider the circumstances that led to a death caused by domestic abuse and identify where responses to the situation could have been improved. The aim of such an approach is for all relevant parties to take on the lessons learned to improve responses to all domestic abuse victims and, ultimately, prevent future deaths of this kind. Let's look at this honestly and fearlessly. There is a recurring homicide rate in this country. It's, it's, it's broadly been the same. Two women killed a week for the last 11 years on the Home Office statistics. You know, whatever happened before hasn't worked, hasn't been preventing these murders. This film will briefly outline the DHR process and the main themes or lessons to be learned based on the DHRs which have taken place up to now. When a domestic homicide occurs, the relevant police force should inform the relevant Community Safety Partnership, CSP, which has overall responsibility for establishing the DHR. Any professional may refer a domestic homicide to the CSP if they believe there are important lessons for interagency working to be learned. In consultation with local partners, the chair of the CSP will decide whether a DHR takes place. The CSP informs the Home Office of its decision, which will be reviewed by a quality assurance panel. All correspondence around the decision should be provided to the family. Where a DHR goes ahead, a review panel is established. The review panel will appoint a chair to manage and coordinate the process and produce the final report. The panel will be responsible for undertaking the homicide review and will be formed from members of local statutory and voluntary agencies. The panel will consider what happened and what could have been done differently. They will do this within the parameters of a bespoke terms of reference relevant to that particular case. The police, local authorities, the probation service, strategic health authorities, primary care trusts, local health boards and NHS trusts are required to participate in DHRs. It is also important that other organisations are considered for inclusion, such as housing associations and social landlords, the prison service, general practitioners, dentists and teachers. The voluntary and community sector should also be included along with family, friends, employers and colleagues. Family and friends may have unique insights in, into why, you know, what, what was it like living with abuse? Uh, they will have a different perspective. But the crucial impact of DHRs is in learning the lessons they can teach us. It is important that all professionals, and in particular those working in healthcare, have a clear understanding of what domestic abuse is, because those experiencing abuse use the health system even when they avoid other organisations such as the police or social services. Information sharing and multi-agency working is crucial to fully understand the risk faced by a victim of domestic abuse and their children. Professionals should be able to make informed decisions around information sharing based on a consistent understanding of risk. Domestic abuse can co-occur with other complex needs such as sexual abuse, alcohol and substance misuse and mental illness. In some cases, these issues can be inextricably linked to the perpetration or experience of domestic abuse. If agencies focus only on addressing one of the client's needs, they miss the opportunity to consider how the client's needs are linked. In many cases, victims require multi-agency, multi-specialist intervention which considers their needs holistically. In all cases where a child is at risk, the child should be referred to children's services. Where children are living in households where domestic abuse occurs, it is important the impact of this on the children is not missed. These are not new lessons. They reflect the feedback of many professionals given over the years and they mirror the types of lessons we should also be learning from child practice and serious case reviews. As professionals, these lessons must inform and change the way we practice. If we can bring professionals to the table to really experience the emotion, you know, bring it on, really experience the depth of the loss and what's going on here, maybe that can help them, uh, you know, to, to feel empowered to make changes. <laughs>